We all want to level up our embedded designs, right? Just like we want to level up our half-elf ranger so we can finally get our animal companion. I'm picking Triceratops. Now, I know it's not in the core rules, but... Okay, sorry. Uh, never mind. <laughs> yes, leveling up. It's great. <laughs> Have you ever thought about leveling up your next embedded design with DLP? You know, a little light steering for your next embedded design? To take it up a notch or two. <laughs> I know, I know, I hear you. Trying out DLP? Ha ha ha. I don't think so, Amelia. Well, hold off there, partner. It may be easier and cheaper than you think. Sure, until now, adding DLP maybe wasn't your first choice to add that special something to your next embedded design. But now, my friends, a hundred bucks will do ya. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. DLP can take your embedded design to the next level and not break your bomb. Let me introduce you to the DLP Light Crafter Display 2000 EVM. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Philip Dolo from Texas Instruments and I are talking all about DLP, how you can use it in your next design, and how the DLP Light Crafter Display 2000 EVM is making DLP technology more accessible than ever before. Let's go. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Texas Instruments' DLP Light Crafter Display 2000 EVM. Hi, Philip. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here today. Okay, so I've heard of DLP for years in the context of video projection, but I'm considering using DLP for my embedded design work as well. I'm glad you're thinking about that because there's a lot more to DLP than might meet the eye. I'd like to kind of introduce you here to the DLP Light Crafter Display 2000 EVM. DLP Light Crafter Display 2000 EVM is the most affordable way to get started with DLP technology and to evaluate it both for smaller embedded designs and more ambitious designs as well. You'll notice that if you look at the picture I have here, Two of the most really standout things is first off, you can see how small the uh, optical engine is on this guy. And the optical engine is that little box, that little black box with the copper attachment that this is what's got the optics and the micro mirror array that runs the light. So this is what's actually doing the magic. So on the left, that's not a giant business card, is it? <laughs> no, 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 of course not. I wish I had a business card that big. But this is the actual size of the system. And you'll see that the optical engine is actually pretty small in comparison to the full thing. So if you're an expert PCB designer, you can make a pretty small system if you uh, cram all that electronics into one little thing right there. But we kind of wanted to do a few things with the Light Crafter Display 2000 EVM. The first of which is to provide designers and embedded systems engineers with a way to just try out DLP technology. I want you to be able to see what it looks like on the wall so that you can get hooked by how great it looks. Cool. $99 is a lot cheaper than I thought I was going to have to pay to evaluate this technology. Now, for those of my audience who aren't already familiar with DLP, walk us through some of the cool capabilities. I'm going to kind of go at a very high level just so some people who aren't as familiar with DLP can understand what it's doing. If you look at this example, which I, I'm quite fond of, you see the football field with all the people holding their placards up. These guys here are holding up the placards in a way that's very similar to the way that our DMD operates. But really, what's happening is that the light is being steered in a way that lets you create any kind of image you want on the wall. And due to the nature of the design, you're able to achieve a very high contrast and a very high brightness. And one of the things that's so awesome is that you're able to do this in a very scalable technology, as we saw in the previous slide. So this guy can offer really high contrast and really high brightness. And of course, as we've seen in the previous slide, it's very scalable. So you can come up with some very creative designs that really push the limits of where and how you can use display technology and projection displays in general. Awesome. That's a great explanation. Now, for those people on the left, they can do the wave, but can the DLP do the wave? Not only can you push all sorts of display content to your DMD, because it's really a projector at the end of the day, but DLP also specializes in structured light applications, which lets you 
control the individual mirrors on a per mirror basis, which allows you to create extremely accurate structured light patterns, which have been used in applications such as 3D printing and 3D scanning. Very cool. So the depth kits are inexpensive. That's great. But what am I really looking at for bomb impact for designing DLP in my design? You can see kind of some of the raw numbers here on this slide. The DLP 2000, which is the EVM that I was kind of showcasing on the earlier slide, is right down there and is at the lowest cost of if you just want to try DLP, you just want to see what it looks like, you can buy one of these and you can plug it in, put it up on the wall and you can see what it looks like. In terms of the bomb impact, you're just looking at these three components, really. You'll see that the DLP 2000, which is the DMD, is the meat and potatoes of the chipset. That's what's really creating your image. The DLPC 2607 is the controller, which has the software, which drives the mirrors in a way in order to produce the image that you want. You'll see if you ever go to our website, you'll see that the controllers are you typically abbreviated with the DLPC prefix. And then finally, the DLPA 1000, which has a DLPA prefix, has the power management IC of the chipset. And that's responsible for driving both the 2607 as well as the DLP 2000 DMD, which requires very specific power management routines in order to function properly. Okay, cool. So what all do I get with the EVM that we were just talking about a minute ago? So what you're getting is the strengths of DLP wrapped up in a very concise and accessible package. The versatility of DLP technology, which I really have to reiterate, is kind of on full display in this particular EVM. Of course, you can design a system much smaller than this using this particular chipset, but we hope that this EVM kind of gives you an idea of what is achievable. We also want to make it as easy as possible for you to, after having evaluated the image quality of our DLP technology, to go in and actually try to prototype some kind of application yourself. And so that's why we made it interface seamlessly with the BeagleBone Black and also, you know, have an open-ended interface so that you can kind of go in with other types of host processors like the Raspberry Pi and the Dragon Board and that sort of stuff. We've also provided a lot of the tools that you're going to need in order to be able to try to implement lots of creative applications, which we will spend some time talking about in the next couple slides. Cool. So how can I try out some of these use cases? So we've kind of provided two different ways to evaluate this DLP chipset. The first and kind of most obvious way is really just plug it in. We wanted to make sure that it was really easy for people who have never seen DLP before, have never tried it before. We want those people to be able to plug it in and actually see an image on the wall, and they can actually see what the real system looks like. What does it actually look like? How does it actually perform? Without having to do all that extra work of coding something, designing something. And so we'd be very happy that people will plug this in and be able to actually see what DLP looks like. And in addition to that, we encourage people to take their favorite I2C peripheral and you can go ahead and plug it into this guy with a few jumpers and you can easily talk to it and issue I2C commands to cycle through different kinds of test patterns and different images. And depending on your application, you can probably get a good sense of what the image might look like. And so from there, depending on what kind of design or embedded system you're interested in prototyping, you can then add in one of the more prominent CPU display building blocks, such as a BeagleBone Black or a Raspberry Pi, and you can write your own code or use existing software libraries. Those have a very large established database of existing content that you can use to prototype a design. Got it. It seems like on day one, I would be able to show my boss, here's what we can expect from designing this into our products. Right. And that's kind of the goal. And there's different levels to that. As I said previously, if all you're interested in is just seeing whether DLP technology is a good fit in terms of its strengths and contrast, brightness, that sort of thing, you can go ahead and just plug it in, look at the splash screen. You can probably get a good idea from there. And then, of course, if you want to try to prototype something, you can write some code using the existing libraries on the BeagleBone. Awesome. Let's dive into some details. Now, how do those bomb items we've talked about earlier fit into my system to form a whole new subsystem? So here is the block diagram that we provide associated with the Lightcrafter 2000 EBM. And if you look at it, the left side, you'll see the optical engine, which is kind of like a black box. You typically would be able to purchase that from an optical engine manufacturer. I'll touch on that a little more in a moment. 
And then you have the host processor, which in this case would be the BeagleBum or you know any other host processor you might be using. And then the guts is inside here. And this is everything. The DLPA 1000 and the DLPC 2607 and some of the associated ICs that you're using to kind of drive and facilitate that. If you can design this into your PCB, you can design a DLP system. That looks really easy. Yes. And if you can design these few components into your system, you can fit a DLP display into your design. While this particular EVM uses a parallel RGB 888 to drive the display, there's a lot of space conscious users that might prefer different mobile interfaces such as DSi. And we actually support those in some of our other chipsets. So depending on your application, you might be interested in checking out those after you've experimented a little bit with the Lightcrafter Display 2000 EVM. So it seems like designing DLP into my system could bring a lot of differentiation into my final product. Yes, and it's not so simple as just saying that I can have a display with great contrast and great brightness. It's also the ability to be able to differentiate with new kinds of applications that weren't previously possible. So we're very proud of the benefits of DLP when it comes to our contrast and our brightness. And of course, it can fit in very small form factor. But also, we want to emphasize that embedded systems designers should really consider all of these things together when they're thinking of a different kinds of prototypes and products they can make. Because it's not so simple as just saying, oh, let me try to shove in a projector with as much brightness as I can. Because not all different designs are a matter of, I want to get as much brightness as possible. You can really take advantage of the size and contrast of DLP if you're, for instance, say, designing something like a augmented reality glasses. And so we hope that you'll be able to go in and evaluate all the different aspects of DLP because they're all potentially beneficial to different kinds of designs. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the applications we can do with DLP. Now, obviously, we can project video, but beyond that. So we previously talked about stuff like smart speakers, but there's a lot of other kind of uh, less intuitive types of applications that can be really cool. So I've got a kind of a few of them pictured up here. So for instance, one interesting example is the kind of smart home archetype where you've got a projector, rather you've got the DLP 2000 functioning as a projector for a smart home display. So not only is it compact and discreet, but it's also kind of an on-demand display. So that means that it's on when you want it to be and not when you don't want it to be. So it may be a potential boon to consider if you are, for instance, trying to design a system and you don't want to have a big old screen on your wall. I can definitely see not wanting to have a screen on my wall for something that's going to actually be needed a tenth of a percent of the time. It's very easy to add touch functionality to these different kinds of applications with the DLP technology. You can also make a display that's actually a keypad or some kind of interactive display. And then, of course, we also have some of the augmented reality type of applications like the cooktop at the top right, which really benefits from the contrast that you can get with DLP because being able to see those kind of UI elements overlaid on top of your table without being obstructive is really beneficial. Okay, so some of these interactivity ideas have me intrigued, Philip. How would I go about integrating some of those? We've actually done a little bit of the work for you, and we have gone in and analyzed a lot of the different ways that you can implement interactivity with a DLP system. Cool. If you go to our website on TI.com, you can actually review some of our white papers and application notes, which kind of covers some of the difficulties that some people might face when trying to tackle specific kinds of applications. So on TI.com, we've provided many white papers and app notes, which facilitate the use and exploration of these different kinds of display interactivity methods. So if you're interested in something like a touch-capable display, We want to make it as easy as possible for you guys to actually explore those things. And so we encourage you to actually go through and read over these because it'll provide you a lot of tips and tricks on how to make the best use of DLP technology. I also wanted to point out that even DLP on its own is capable of interactivity depending on how you use it. DLP technology is capable of very good structured light, which allows it to function well as a 3D scanner or a 3D printer. Cool. I hadn't thought about that before. I will definitely check out those white papers. 
I can see a lot of options with gesture recognition and all kinds of things like that that could interact with what I want to do with DLP. So if you could, Philip, can you go over the main points for me? We've covered quite a lot today. Sure. So stepping back a little bit, we've talked about DLP on the high level, but we also talked about it in the context of the Lightcrafter Display 2000. So this is our most affordable platform to explore use of DLP technology if you're interested in kind of evaluating it for your project. As we've seen, it's applicable to a wide variety of embedded applications. Not only that, but it's also been kind of designed to work out of the box with the BeagleBone Black and compatible with virtually any host processor with the sufficient video interfacing capabilities. Because of the fact that it's interfacing with a Linux environment, that also means that all of the code and infrastructure that exists there is really available for you to use in order to very quickly prototype a design that you're interested in. That's all thanks to the very well-established Linux developer community that produces all this stuff. Great. I think I'm ready to get started. And I'm going to click that link and go to a mauser.com site for more information. So, Philip, can you give me a rundown on some of the resources you have available for us? Sure. So I'd actually like to bring your attention to the fishbowl video that you may have seen in our Lightcrafter Display 2000 promotional video. This video was actually released whenever we released the EVM in the first place. And I really like it because it showcases one of the strong points of DLP technology, which is the ability to create freeform displays using its high contrast. So what I mean by that is really if you're displaying black, then if you project it on the wall, that black with a circular video image, it looks like a circular video image without anything around it, which is really awesome because it means that now your display doesn't have to be a rectangle. It doesn't have to be a, a typical display if you don't want it to be. So anything I could fit into my 16 by 9 bounding box would be fine? Exactly. And depending on which DMD you use, you can even get a very good resolution out of that. The BeagleBone Black, for instance, has a pretty nice infrastructure of custom applications such as QT and OpenCV, that sort of thing that you can use to get started on different kinds of applications. And not only that, but we've also seen the community develop some really nice stuff using other host processors. So for instance, we've seen the Raspberry Pi featuring a custom-made adapter board on MicMake which actually lets you go ahead and interface the Lightcrafter Display 2000 with a Raspberry Pi with no additional wires or jumpers. You just plug and play, which is really awesome because that means that the different strengths of the Raspberry Pi can be leveraged for even more kinds of unique applications for the Lightcrafter Display 2000 and DLP in general. Well, great. I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Philip. This was super cool. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about the Texas Instruments DLP Lightcrafter Display 2000 EVM. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.